Welcome everyone to this brand new season of Clutched. And to kick things off, we're going to review a car with a very strong heritage. It's the Mazda RX-8. The Mazda RX-8 was first produced in 2003 and this is actually a successor to the Mazda RX-7 which was a very successful sports car. You know, when I look at this car, I can actually tell that the designers were trying very hard to achieve a sports car look. You know, it's got a very huge bonnet, sexy wheel arches and a very low and wide stance, you know. But at the same time, they wanted the car to be practical which is why this car comes with four doors. Now, I've seen uh, many brands out there try to give a four-door car a coupe look and usually you find them hiding the door handles somewhere around here you know, just so that the car looks like a coupe. But I don't think anyone has done a much better job than uh, Mazda with the suicide doors. This really is a very clever design, you know, because it does give the car a coupe look but you have those two extra seats with easy accessibility in case you want to carry you know, two of your friends. Friends, not your mum. I don't think she would like to be thrown in the back seat like this. Doors that open this way are referred to as suicide doors because um, in case the door isn't closed properly and the car moves off and the door flings open and you get uh, swung out of your seat, you know, and then you get thrown on the ground and the car runs over you and your guts spill out and you get final destination part seven. But no, don't worry, that's not going to happen because these doors will not open unless the front doors are open. Clever design. The only way you might end up injuring yourself is if the front passenger does not release the front seat belt and then you try to get off. This sexy looking car with the huge bonnet and the sports car classification, it has the same sized engine as a Suzuki Swift 1.3. And no, it's not turbocharged, it's not supercharged, it's not any charged. So how does it work? It's called a Wankel rotary engine. The physics behind a rotary Wankel engine is very different from all the other engines that you get, or even your boxer engines. There's no pistons, there's no camshafts, there are no valves or valve springs, none of that. If you really want to know how a Wankel rotary engine works, I found this great video online and I'm going to leave the link somewhere around here so you can click on it to check it out. Basically, it's a, it's simply put, it's a triangle or a fat triangle that rotates inside of an oval, okay? And this rotating force gives you your power. Power, speaking of which, is from about 206 all the way up to 246 brake horsepower. Now this, or rather which power you get, depends on the transmission which you choose. So you can go for a 4-speed or a 6-speed automatic or a 5-speed or a 6-speed manual. If you want the highest power, go for the 6-speed manual. Personally, I think it's great how you can squeeze so much of power out of a very small Wankel rotary engine. And because there are no pistons, no camshafts, no valves, valve springs and all that, uh, the engine weighs so much lighter. And of course, you have much lesser moving parts, which means the amount of wear and tear parts which need to be replaced is much lower. Now, compared to the older Mazda RX-7, which also uses a rotary engine, this RX-8 has its engine placed lower and more to the rear. Okay, so that gives you a lower center of gravity, which is good, and better weight distribution, which is great. Now, because the RX-8 has a missing B pillar, which is uh, the pillar you usually find here at the end of the front door, what Mazda did is they actually strengthened the flooring and the entire cabin so that the rigidity is not compromised, you know, and you don't get unnecessary flex. Okay, basically what it means is that the handling of this car is fantastic. And with the rotary engine, you get a very high revving capability. High revving engine, fantastic handling, front engine, rear wheel drive. It sounds like the perfect formula of fun to me. Okay, so right now we are inside the Mazda RX-8 and honestly, it's quite sad that the one that I'm driving is the four-speed automatic, all right? Because if I had the six-speed manual, I think I'll be having a lot more fun. Your driving position is very low, all right? And you're close to the road and it's very nice. But you gotta be careful. If you've never driven a rear-wheel drive car before, 
okay you have to be careful because if you're going to give it a bit too much of gas um, at the wrong time especially when the roads are wet and uh, you are turning there's only two outcomes for it one is either you break into a really cool drift if you know how to counter steer or two you're going to end up hugging a tree the interior of the car is a bit boring but i like the fact that the center console runs all the way to the back you know uh true you cannot carry three passengers on the rear but it kind of gives your rear passengers this hold on you know hang in there we're going for a ride feel you know because they are really locked in position so that's nice another thing to take note of is uh, just at the side of the uh, gearbox console all right where it's supposed to be flat you will actually realize there are two big lumps on the side over here uh, why is it like that that's pretty simple because that's probably where the transmission is okay now remember how i told you that mazda built this engine to be lower and more to the rear to give the car a good weight distribution the drawback is uh, uh, quite a bit of your leg room is taken up you can tell you know that uh, this is a car the, pro the makers of this car probably built the engine first and then built the car around it you know which is not a bad thing because it kind of gives you this feel that there's a lot of importance uh, placed on the engine of course, being a sports car, the Mazda RX-8 has its tachometer placed in the middle. There's this guard on the handbrake. I don't know why it's there. Probably to give the driver a, a fighter plane feel, you know. And prepare for liftoff. Something like that. Although this is a four-speed automatic, it does come with pedal shifters. Ooh, rev kicking up. Ah, you see that? push the car and no you cannot get a rotary engine out there from any other brand right now from what I know it's only Mazda uh, who has it I think uh, Mercedes had it like many many years ago but right now it's only Mazda and because it's a rear-wheel drive car you can actually use this for drifting all right it comes with uh, you know, uh, an LSD, which is what you need for drifting, and uh, this car comes with it. All right, so if you're thinking of uh, entering the sport of drifting, this will be a good choice. Just like other coupes, you get a lousy excuse for a boot space, and no, you can't knock the rear seats down. Looking at what this guy has done to his car, you can tell that uh, he's not a person who. Uh, carries a lot of stuff. A more accurate measure of the price of a car would actually be to measure its depreciation. Okay, and how this is calculated is very simple. You take the price of the car, you deduct away 55% of the open market value, which is what you get back once the series ends, and you just divide it by the number of years left. For example, you can get an RX-8 automatic for about $40,000 with an open market value of $25,000 and two and a half years left. So how the depreciation is calculated, simple, you take $40,000 and you deduct away 55% of the $25,000, right? And you get about $26,000. Now because the COE only has two and a half years left on it, $26,000 divide by two and a half years, you get $10,500. And that is uh, roughly the depreciation of a Mazda RX-8 automatic. And thanks to the 1.3 litre engine, the Rotex will only cost you $572 a year. If the Wankel engine is so amazing, why is it other brands do not use it? Well, it's because there are a few drawbacks. The fuel consumption for this car is bad and it's because of the Wankel engine. Although it's a 1.3, fuel consumption is about maybe 8 or if you're good, nine kilometers to the liter. There's this engine oil addiction problem. Once again, because of the dynamics of how a rotary engine works, it burns off a lot of engine oil, which is why if you notice on the inside, there's even an oil pressure gauge that comes with the car, all right? So that allows you to keep an eye on the amount of oil pressure it has. And whenever the oil pressure runs out, you have to be willing to get your hands dirty and do the top ups. Because it's a rotary engine, when you open the engine bay, you don't have intimidating cam covers or shiny exhaust headers to show off. What you can see is just a pile of, of wires and, and pipes and it's in a mess. 
so you don't get to show off your engine bay, so to speak. And also, there are some uh, drivers and, and professionals who have mentioned that you cannot switch off the rotary engine when it's still cold, all right? Otherwise, you're going to run into all kinds of problems, okay? So if you're going to valet this car, or if you're going to make a short drive to Pongol Naslama to do a tapau, make sure you don't forget. Honestly, I think uh, Mazda, they tried to create a sports car for the everyday man. You know, you got a high revving engine with uh, no excuse not to give your girlfriend's irritating friends a lift. So they're trying to strike a balance. But did they succeed? I don't know. Although the RX-8 has a very strong heritage, I really feel if you really want to enjoy and appreciate the RX-8, you cannot compare it to the RX-7. You have to look at this car on its own. The RX-7 is simply too sexy and it's too powerful and it's almost like comparing uh, Fandi Ahmad and Eric Cantona. They are both great soccer players but in totally different leagues. Because of the RX-8's very strong heritage, I really feel that this is a car that I can really respect but I just can't fall in love with it, you know. It's like your friend's hot girlfriend. She's hot but you can't fall in love with her. And right now, it's time for us to rate the Mazda RX-8. Yes, we are still rating cars. So is it going to be a buy, a don't buy or an I don't know? Well, we here at Clutch, we believe the Mazda RX-8 is simply an I don't know. Let's get out of here. What the fight? Just wipe, no. All right, let's move out. Did you shoot that? Let's get out of here. Okay, come, come, come. Three, two, one, asa. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Huh? Macam, macam, audio, audio, audio. <laughs> Let's get out of here. This week on Clutch, we're going to review the B-52 bomber. Is that a B-52 bomber? It's not. You know what is it? It's your father. <laughs>